Beware of suspicious packages. That's a warning coming from authorities after a package exploded at a FedEx facility near San Antonio. And authorities are connecting it to the bombings in Austin. We're live with the clues investigators are now uncovering. Also startling facts revealed about United Airlines track record when it comes to transporting animals. Spoiler alert, it is not good news. Now the airline is making major changes to its policy. The news starts now. First tonight, the investigation into those bombings in Texas is growing after a fifth bombing incident. The latest exploded overnight in a FedEx sorting facility. This was just out of northeast San Antonio. Now we have team coverage on this developing story. We start with Brett Buffington, who is live in Shirts, Texas, where workers were inside when the bomb went off. So Brett, what else have you learned? Reagan, the only person injured this morning when this bomb went off, a worker who was standing nearby. That worker okay this afternoon, suffering only from a concussion. This bomb in a box on a conveyor belt inside that FedEx ground sorting facility here. The bomb's destination, Austin. The FBI wouldn't say much about it. Well, we currently can't go into uh, the details of the package. Leaving a lot of unanswered questions about this latest bomb. Police now believe it's the fifth made by the same person. The person obviously knows what he's doing, um, uh, trying to mix things up. The bomb here inside a package mailed from this FedEx shipping store in Austin. The box bound back to the same city. Tonight, FedEx confirming in a statement this box was one of two mailed by that person. Federal investigators aren't saying what they found in the other. When the bomb exploded here overnight, 75 workers were inside this building. Today, they couldn't leave before being questioned by federal agents. Just a few of the now several hundred on the ground in Texas searching for a serial bomber. The public safety is our number one priority, and we're uh, providing all the resources that we have that we can to uh, finally find some the person or individuals responsible for this. This fifth bomb just two days after two men were injured in another attack in Austin. That bomb triggered by a tripwire. So far, the only case where the explosive wasn't in a package. Police tonight with the message now to two concerned cities. This is a very fluid investigation and we want the general public to know that their safety is our number one priority. This afternoon, the heart of Texas is on edge. Austin police tweeted this morning in the last 24 hours, they've checked out 420 suspicious package calls. That same number since these bombings started on March 2nd, more than 1200. We're live in Church, Texas this afternoon, Brett Buffington, KHOU 11 News. All right, thank you, Brett, for the update. And these bombings that we've been telling you all about are not the first time packages have been used to wreak havoc. One of the most infamous cases actually dates back nearly 100 years. And there's a good chance you've never even heard about it. Jason Miles joins us with a brief history lesson. They're called the 1919 Anarchist bombings, a fascinating case that had ripple effects. Let's begin in April 1919. 36 mail bombs were sent to locations across the U.S., mostly government offices. The packages were disguised as novelty samples. Think things like toys packed in a box. Fortunately, most were intercepted after the initial blast, thanks in part to a mail clerk who set aside some boxes due to insufficient postage. Two months later, in June of 1919, though, eight larger package bombs were detonated at several locations. Politicians, industrialists, business leaders were all targeted. Like the initial bombs, these were tied to, of all things, Italian anarchists. And we have some photos here. This is the home of the sitting U.S. Attorney General at the time, home uh, or site of one of those bomb blasts. His name was A. Mitchell Palmer, this guy, who then began a campaign to weed out suspected radicals rounding them up in certain areas and cities across the country. Many of them actually were deported in the unwarranted arrests, the illegal searches and seizures. All of those things became known as Palmer raids. This is a photo of one of those roundups. Now, fast forward another year to September 1920. Those same radicals or suspected anarchists 
were pinned for a much more devastating bombing. We're talking in the heart of Wall Street, New York City. Nearly 40 people died. Hundreds of others were injured when a wagon loaded with 100 pounds of dynamite went off near the Chase Bank building that still exists today. In fact, marks left by some flying shrapnel in this explosion can still be seen to this day. Decades later, the Unabomber became a household name thanks to his mail bomb spree. We'll revisit that case coming up at 5. Back to you. All right, Jason, thanks. And of course, we're staying on top of the Austin explosions. Follow us on the KHOU mobile app, where we also have a list of suspicious things to look for when you actually get a package and what you should do if you get a suspicious package. Developing right now, there is a lockdown at a Spring ISD elementary campus. Uh, that lockdown has since been lifted, and children have just been released for the day, we're told. A briefcase left on a sidewalk across the street from Thompson Elementary was spotted about 1.15 this afternoon. Deputies rushed to the scene. The bomb-sniffing dogs determined that briefcase was harmless. Deputies do not know yet who left the briefcase on the street. A 16-year-old girl is in critical condition after a school shooting in Southern Maryland. Officials say the 17-year-old shooter died after a school resource officer confronted him. Now, it's unclear if the gunman took his own life, but the sheriff says the shooter had a relationship with the girl he shot. Authorities also say a 14-year-old boy was also hurt in the shooting. Great Mills High School will be closed tomorrow. And Houston police are still looking for a man who they say beat his father to death with a baseball bat. This happened overnight on Silmar Road in Southwest Houston. Neighbors say 29 year old Danny Pedroza has struggled with mental issues, but his dad was usually able to calm him down. Police say his mother witnessed the beating. They ask you to contact them if you know where Danny is so they can question him. Testimony got underway today in the trial of Leon Jacob, the former doctor accused of hiring a hitman to murder his ex. Among the witnesses on the stand today is the man who blew this case wide open. Houston City Council Member Michael Kubosh. Stephanie Whitfield has been in court all day and joins us uh, there live. Any bombshell testimony today, Stephanie? Well, it was the testimony you were just talking about. Houston City Councilman Michael Kubosh was the first person to take the stand today. I'll explain his involvement in just a minute, but first, let's talk about opening statements. Both sides agree Leon Jacob's life was spiraling out of control in January of last year. His girlfriend had broken up with him. He was even charged with assaulting and stalking her. They also agreed Jacob didn't want her to testify. But here's where the stories diverge. The state says Jacob wanted to have his ex killed. They say there are 14 different audio recordings that prove that. However, the defense claims he just wanted her to leave town. Well, today we heard from several witnesses, including Kubosh. He was Jacob, Jacob's bail bondsman, and he was the person who called police about the alleged murder for hire plot. To be honest with you, I felt like I was talking to the devil himself when he was talking to me. It's just so, it's so, he was so aggressive and he he said she can't testify against me i i i, I want her taken back to pittsburgh there has been a lot of discussion today about whether jacob wanted his ex to simply leave town or if he had given the hitman a green light to harm her now we'll have much more on today's testimony in court as well as pictures taken during the investigation we'll have that part of the story coming up at five len should be quite a scene as these testimonies continue to come in on both sides. Stephanie, thank you. All right, let's change gears now and talk about the first day of spring and Houston really is in bloom. This is a live look over downtown Houston right now. Sunny, beautiful, dare I say a little chilly this you morning. You can't Len. say that. Let's get your <laughs> check of the forecast yes. with Brooks Garner. Uh, Man, what, what, was the, what was the temperature this morning, Brooks? Well, we got down into the upper 40s to around nice. 50, so it, it was nice. I mean, after that deep, thick humidity, this, this weather is just like liberating. 72 degrees right now, dew point 39, relative humidity at 30%, uh, fresh northwest wind about 15 miles an hour. Live View Hotel Galvez over Lake of Mexico. Yeah, that's right. There's not a wave on there because the offshore wind is flattening it out. So good weather for a stand up paddleboard or kayak session. Not so much, however, for the surfers. It's 76 right now on the island. If you're still in that spring break mode, 72 in Houston, 70 in the woodlands. So with low humidity and clear skies, we'll cool things off significantly and quickly tonight. About 67 by 7 and 58 by 11 o'clock. Coming up, I'll show you how long this nice weather lasts and what awaits on both coasts that could affect your travel, guys. All right. Thank you, Brooks.